I just landed in Iowa for the first time, and now I'm going to my first ever Sunday Mass. I'm definitely the only Muslim in here, but I'm here with someone who's had a deep connection with Islam for longer than I've been alive. This is Laura, and in 1985, she fell in love with a Muslim immigrant from Egypt named Kamed. They spontaneously got married that fall, with an improvised cake and everything, then got married again that winter, this time by a priest. It began more than three decades of an interfaith union that many people still argue is impossible. What happens when a devout Muslim and devout Christian commit to each other to build something new without giving up who they are? Laura and Kamel invited me here to small town Iowa where they raised three boys to show me how they did it. My name is Ayman Ismail. To grow up Muslim means to grow up being feared. So I'm traveling the country to find out for myself if there's really any reason to be afraid of American Muslims. To hear many commentators tell it, the boom in the Muslim American population is a time bomb. We're just too different. Western civilization is in a war. But Muslims are now more than 1% of the U.S. population. And we're growing fast. And we're also mixing. And to some people, this seems like a big problem. Especially when you're dealing with Middle Eastern religions versus Western religions. It's very, very difficult. You're dealing with views on women. And it's not just on the news. If Allah is not the basis of that emotion, then in fact, it is not pure love. This believing woman, she's not better than the believing woman. But the reality is, these marriages are already happening all over the country. And those numbers will likely trend upward. According to the Pew Research Center, the American Muslim population is becoming both younger and more native-born, both of whom are more likely to marry non-Muslims. Right now, 13% of us are married to or cohabitating with a non-Muslim. And that means more Laura and Kamel's. Laura and Kamel run this restaurant together. It's called Relish. It looks like a house because, well, it is a house. They live upstairs. Every night after feeding what seems to be the whole town, Laura and Kamel hunkered down with the staff for a family-style dinner. Here, they told me how within weeks of meeting each other, they were married. <laughs> Laura and I were visiting my sister in Minnesota. My parents were there, my brother-in-law, about th literally 3 o'clock in the morning, we were talking. Are you going to marry this woman? I said, yeah. I said, when? I said, whenever. <laughs> he said, why don't we marry you tomorrow? And she said, as long as we can have another ceremony with a priest and my family present, I'm cool with that. So, we got married. I was wearing somebody else's skirt, somebody else's blouse, because I think I'd only brought jeans. So the next time we visit her family, her father doesn't even bother looking at me. He looks at her and he says, OK, Laura, Kamal is married now. What about you? <laughs> and it wasn't totally smooth sailing. We knew a lot of priests. And I was like, no problem. <laughs> Getting one of them to marry us. Ah, easy. Some, oh my god. Was it a problem? Nightmare. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Family priest, like, for years and years, it was like, no. And I'm, I'm kind of like, I mean, he didn't even think about it. Um, one of the priests that had been at the seminary when my brothers were there did agree to do it, but I, I didn't think that should be a problem, but I was really naive. <laughs> They're a fascinating couple, partly because neither of them felt the need to convert to make the relationship work. The next morning, I went to the Mass with Laura, where she goes every Sunday, five minutes to nine, no earlier, no later. And later that day, I prayed with Kamel, with Laura nearby praying on her rosaries. To talk more, we headed above the restaurant. This place is amazing. There's Christian iconography next to Islamic calligraphy, a Quran next to a Bible. And that led to a story about how they raised their kids. We discussed it negotiated basically. For me, if we would have kids, they needed to be Muslim. I really just wanted my kids to grow up with a sense of God, higher power, or whatever. I think that was really important to me more so than that they be Catholic or even Christian. I was like, okay, well, that means he gets to do all the religion talks. I don't have to worry about that. And then I have to think, go through that whole... Well, why, do you, why don't you pray with us? especially with the oldest, when she reminded him of prayer time when I was away. You're not Muslim, you can't tell me what to do. <laughs> so that's kind of why I sit in the back and say a couple decades of the rosary or something. There's that thing in Catholic families, that's, you know, the family that prays together, stays together. It's like, okay, well, I can pray with them. Even when they decided to raise their kids this way, Laura never felt the need to convert. You know, I, that was never a question that I asked him. It was a question I asked myself. And it's never a question I asked him. Yeah. I mean, people asked me. Other people asked me. Uh, and, and I said, 
What's it got to do with me? Why do I need to convert to worship a different way? The Catholic Church has that cultural patriarchy and Islam as it's practiced often has that, you know. It's not frying pan fire, it's kind of like frying, frying pan, pan, different frying, frying, frying pan. pan, you know? <laughs> Did you feel like you guys had to make a lot of compromises to make it work? I don't think it was compromises with religion, actually. We, we didn't compromise our faith. I don't really believe we have problems. Yeah, because I mean, of religion. It's not we have a problem, problem because of marriage, <laughs> which is inherent in being married. We have been working together for the last 20 years. We're in each other's face constantly. And we're getting each other's nerve. After, I wanted to talk to the couple apart to really learn how they navigated their early years, especially in small town Iowa. I didn't know anything about Islam. He gave me the Quran, and I think I read it all, though. I don't know how much of it I retained, and that was when I was like, okay, well, there's nothing in here that I have a problem with. I hadn't read the Bible through from cover to cover, so I was kind of like, there might be more in here that's a problem for you. There might be more in here that's a problem for me. Because you grew up in a world before uh, Islam became such a household right. issue. I can't imagine what that would have been like if I'd been bombarded with the stuff that people that are growing up now are bombarded with. Do you think Islam is at war with the West? I think Islam hates us. It's painful for me to watch. It's hurtful for me to say, it's like, that's not my kids. That's not my husband. That's not how I see them practice their religion. I wondered what it must have been like to move to Iowa. There just aren't a lot of Muslims here. How could that not have had an impact on Kamel, especially with pervasive stereotypes about how Muslim men treat women? He said that it just hasn't come up in his personal life but there have been some teachable moments around town. Even though I'm not a professor, I just love to teach. You know, when people find out about, I'm Muslim, is that why you have a beard? No, dude, I hate shaving. <laughs> There's nothing to do, you know? So I never really broadcasted my religion, but I've never tried to keep it a secret. I mean, I follow the saying, don't walk meekly and don't walk proudly, walk comfortably. After spending two days with them, I was still curious. Did they ever wonder, even a little bit, if things would have been easier if she just married a Catholic and he married a Muslim? Some of it is just the, you know, the man-woman thing, I'm like, and some of it is how you were raised. I have a sister who's married to another woman. I'm like, would it be easier if I fell in love with a woman? I mean, like, at least she'd get me yeah. sometimes, you know? Ironically enough, when I contemplate that and I look around with, with my married Muslim friends, I'm grateful for all I have because I think we'll have more religious disagreement. Two people are bringing in their own cultural baggage. Yes. I can't tell you what would have been, but from, what seeing, from seeing what's around me, I think I'm just right. As unions like Laura and Kamez become more common, the makeup of Muslims in America will change. To me, they show how that's nothing to fear. They raised kids, run a bustling restaurant, and still preserve their faith. And despite the fear, both in and outside the Muslim community, Laura and Kamel show that it can not only work, but last.